Welcome to another episode of the American Academy of Implant Dentistry. This is the one and only podcast of the AAID. I am here with uh, Bobby Stanley. Bob, thanks for joining us today. Or Bobby, thank you for joining us today. Uh, tell me a little about your practice and your affiliation with AAID. And you've, you've recently, uh, you did a webinar for the AAID. Um, tell me a little about yourself and your practice. Sure, I'd love to. So I practice in Cary, North Carolina. I've been practicing for roughly 25 plus years. Um, I absolutely love dentistry, been placing implants for a really long time. My husband, uh, Dr. Robert Stanley, also practices with me. And when I uh, met my husband, when I was in dental school, he was finishing a degree in engineering and went on to finish a PhD in engineering. And I went on to become a dentist and open a practice. And the whole time he kept saying, I'd love to be a dentist. And he finally quit his job in engineering and went back to dental school. And when he joined the practice, he wanted to do all of the implants and I wanted to do all the implants. So uh, we came to a mutual understanding that he would do the surgical part and I would do the restorative part. And it's it's a really great partnership doing it that way. Uh, we've been members of the AAID for many years and really enjoy the organization. We enjoy being able to learn and meet with other like colleagues who um, love implants and are on the cutting edge of dental implants. You are not your average uh, general dentist, right? Um, you have a diplomat from the ICOI, um, fellow from the LVI, master from the master from the AGD, correct? Correct. Yeah. So and you're, I absolutely you're, love learning. Yeah. I absolutely love learning and being able to become accredited in different organizations is a real challenge to me because I know when you take yourself to that next level, it only makes you a better dentist. And if you're a better dentist, you're better for your patients. So I really enjoy that part of it. And so, yeah, taking it to the next level is, is what I've always wanted to do. And that's what I continue to strive to do. So you, um, you're a adjunctive, uh, adjunctive professor at the department of Perio. No, uh, but at UNC in class. Chapel Hill, right? Part yeah. class at UNC, correct. So okay. at UNC Dental School, I'm an adjunct in the Department of Prosthodontics. Uh, um, we also have our own learning institute, Dr. Rob and myself, my husband and myself, uh, Stanley Institute, where we teach dental implants. And we teach um, not only dental implants for new doctors, but we also teach full mouth dental implants. And one of the things that make us unique in our full mouth course is that we can teach you to do full mouth implants and have the patient leave with the process in place with no um, no transition with a denture in three to four hours. And that's what our students love about our full mouth class. Tell me more about that. Oh, I'd love to. So um, we, one of the things we do when we do full mouth is obviously we do sedation dentistry. So we have a CR, CNRA who comes in and sedates the patient. And then we literally uh, go in, we take the teeth out, we use the in sequence protocol where we use a guide for everything, everything okay, gotcha. guided. Uh, and then we place the implants, we place the process in the mouth, the patient wakes up with a full set of teeth and they go home happily ever after. So it's a four course curriculum, is that how it works? The full mouth is one course. So we have a three part curriculum for implants that start from integration of placing in implants, integration of implants and uh, the pros. And then we go from that into full mouth. And you can go straight into full mouth if you've been placing implants. There's not a, a prereq for that if that's what you you would like to do. And what's the what's the background of people that want to take this course? Is it mostly entry level people or people that have been in placing implants for a long period of time? Or so what we find is that our um, our integrating implants course, which is our one, two, and three course, is a high level of many different doctors, including specialists, periodontists, and oral surgeons will go through that that course. But we also get beginners because we start teaching with the rationale of dental implants and the rationale of guided surgery. And then we walk through how to restore and complications and things of that nature. And it works really well for anybody who's been placing dental implants as well as people who have not. And then we find that our full mouth course uh, are people who have been placing dental implants and they're ready to move to the next level or our students who have gone through one, two, and three, and now they're ready to go to the next level. In addition to dental implants, we also teach the business of dentistry. 
And that's one of the things that's where my passion is. And that's one of the things that I teach because I absolutely love being a business owner. And I find that a lot of dentists don't know how to manage people. They don't know about tax deductions. They don't know about making a profit. And so I love that part of dentistry. What's the smile engineer? What is that all about? So the smile engineer is my husband's trade name. So obviously he has a PhD in engineering, engineering, and he loves the engineering side of building smiles. So he's tagged himself the smile engineer, and he's trademarked that name. So uh, that is his name. Oh, so okay. So is it, all right. so tell me about the workflow. A new patient comes in. They've they've heard about you from a friend. They 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 go into your office for a new patient consult. And I mean, you guys on your website, you guys talk about sleep apnea therapy, TMJ, TMD therapy, sedation dentistry. Somebody needs a full mouth rehab. You know, they, they have several different treatment options. Um, how does it, how does that look when they walk in your door and they sit down? They get a CT scan. You, you walk in the room. So are y'all are, are y'all are you guys taking full mouth photos? You know, you get, get coming back in for a treatment plan presentation visit. Um, sure. smile simulation type stuff. How does that look in your office? So what we do is we like to offer free consultations because we want to pay our patients to come in and get to know us. All of our new patients who come in the door, whether they're coming in for a cleaning or they're coming in for a smile makeover or dental implants, every single new patient gets an office tour because we want them to feel what Stanley Dentistry is all about. And so they get an office tour, they come back to the conference room, they sit, they meet with the doctor that's going to be working with them. And if they're here for full mouth implants or any type of implants, they'll meet with Dr. Rob first. And he'll sit down and just answer their questions and give them just his spill is four minutes. He gives them a four minutes. If I could take all your teeth out, give you new teeth while you're sleeping and you wake up three to four hours later with a brand new smile, would you like that? Who wouldn't? If we could make it affordable for you, would you like that? Who wouldn't? First thing we need to do is we need to take a comb beam x-ray to see if you're a candidate. The cost of that is this. Do you want to move forward today? Everybody wants to move forward today. And so we'll get a comb beam. We'll either bring the patient back or we'll talk with them at that visit. Most of the time we'll bring the patient back at another visit, sit down with them, and we'll do a full consultation on um, cost and financing and any other questions that they may have about sedation. And then we schedule them to move forward. In the background, what's happening is we're planning all of our surgery on with the x-ray. We do a, a three-shaped scan, a trio scan. So we merge the two together and we have the mouth with the 3D x-ray and we're able to see everything that we need to see, how much bone reduction we need, how many implants we want to place, where we want to place the teeth. We do have a full set of, of photos so we can literally place the teeth into the patient's mouth when they're smiling on a photograph to see what we want it to look like. So when the patient comes in for surgery and the teeth come out, the implants go in, they leave with a long-term provisional, which is a PMMA. Mill that, PMMA. Correct. A mill PMMA. So you guys are, you're not designing your guides, right? You're outsourcing guides. We are design. designing our guides. We are. So you design your guides. Correct. So every guy, every full mouth guide that's designed is designed on a go-to meeting between the lab and the doctor. And the doctor is saying, place it here, do this, move, move it here. Everything's being guided. Everything's being dictated by the doctor. So you're restoring everything on multi-unit abutments? Correct. So all your prosthesis, upper and lower, would be FP3. Would you say that's correct? Correct. That is correct. Yep. Okay. So are you mostly zirconia, full arch zirconia, or we're only, bar substructure? We're only doing full mouth zirconia. And the reason we do that is we used to do hybrids. But when you have a patient who has such big expectations, and they're so excited, and they've been saving forever to get this done, and they do a hybrid, and one year, two year, three year, four years, doesn't matter how long, something breaks or a tooth pops out. It's devastating to the patient. And that's not that's not the end game that I want for my patient. I want them to be happy. I want them to be thrilled. I want them to feel like they got their money's worth. And the only way I felt like that I could do that is to give them something that I felt like would not break or would not break um, would not go away. The technique that we use in our office, we call Omega Teeth. And we named it Omega Teeth because it's the last teeth you'll ever need. Because we know we're going to place these, these implants in the proper position. And if you follow our guideline, no smoking, no chewing on them initially, if you follow our directions, 
these literally could be the last teeth that you ever need, assuming you come in, get your cleanings, and take care of them at home. Right, right, right. So the, the day they leave with PMMA, right? And assuming the aesthetics are perfect and ideal, you still have the sec. So you come into play, right? So Rob's placing the implants. Is that am I correct? Correct, Doctor Rob's and then implants. I helped design the smile in in the beginning. Right. So yep. the smile's been determined. Nine times out of ten, nine point nine times out of ten, the patient loves their PMMA. Because they love their PMMA, we're doing a second pickup of their PMMA the day of surgery. And so we can move forward to the lab to to give us a final without having to have the patient even come back in. Now, normally what we do is we'll do a second PMMA just to make sure that we like it and everything looks good, and then we'll go to final. So you're, you're taking final impressions day of surgery? Correct. Mounting the case. How are you mounting the case in the lab if you're, ta- if you're taking a PVS impression? We're, no, we're not taking a PVS impression. What we have is we have two PMMAs. We pick, Got it. we pick up the PMMAs with stay Both of them. Correct. Okay. Both of them. One Got is it. a dupe for the lab to move forward with their finals. Okay. So what about, okay. So when do they get the final prosthesis? How, how far out down the road? So we don't do anything for six months. We let the patient sit in their PMMA for six months, let everything heal. We do uh, ISQ test everything before we load, before we do a final restoration. So before it's loaded, finally, we, we will do an ISQ test and make sure everything's integrated the way that we need. And then what about final impressions on the back end? Let, let's say you have some tissue shrink back uh, around the PMMA, then biotype, maybe some bone resorption. Yep. Um, at six months when you remove those things, Sometimes you can expect some, you know, food entrapment underneath the prosthesis on the intaglio surface. What's the restorative process look like then? So I will tell you, we do get some shrinkage of gum tissue. We rarely get bone uh, resorption because we do use BioHorizons implants and they have the laser lock. So it works really well. But if we ever feel like that there's a gap along the pros- the PMMA that's temporary and their gingiva and we want to fill that in, what we'll do is we will see them at that appointment. We'll do a wash with a a light flow um, polyvinyl underneath it, pick that up, send that to the lab. We'll take the backup PMMA, put it in their mouth and send them home. So now the lab has the PMMA that looks great aesthetically and they have a wash against the gum line. They take it back, they put it back and finalize the process. Are you guys have an in-house lab or you're outsourcing these? We're outsourcing these. Got it. You guys got a big office. You got four dentists, right? Uh, we do. So the other the other two, you have a male and a, and a female Correct. dentist. So two males, two females. They do mostly of the general dentistry or um, they, how does that look? That is correct. They do a lot of the general dentistry. Our, our one male doctor, Dr. David, does a lot of our single implants because Dr. Rob is so busy with the full mouths. So he's picked up on a lot of the uh, single implants and he's doing most of those. And unless they're aesthetic in the front because I like to really play around with those. So Dr. Rob and I will do those together. So then, and then you got two hygienists and the rest are dental assistants. You guys got a huge, enormous thing going on there. We, it's unbelievable. Yeah, we have a rather large team. We have, um, you know, we have a full-time videographer. We have a full-time marketing person. Uh, we have a call center, so our, which are, is in our building, but not at the front desk. So the phones are being answered in a separate room. So when patients call, the phones uh, are that the person on the phone is dedicated to them. They're not seeing people come in and out. And at the same time, people coming in and out of the office, they have dedicated people at the front desk who are not on the phone. So it takes extra people to fill in these extra spots, but it makes the, the flow of the office so much better and the patient care so much better. Just curious, where'd you learn that, that uh, setup from? Um, well, uh, probably a lot of what I learned came from Scheduling Institute. Um, it's part of what I teach in my business course. Uh, I took part of what I learned in scheduling is to some, I, I've taken so many CEs, Panky, LVI. I mean, they all teach a little bit of how to make your life better in the dental office. So true. And so, so you true. just take what you learn over, over the course of 25 plus years and put it all together. And, you know, there have been trials and, ev- uh, trials and errors, but it, it all works in the end. Yeah, I agree. So, um, you're lecturing. What does the lecture schedule look like for the rest of the year You know, at the Institute? Well, we're doing a, a hybrid of virtual and in-office or in-person um, 
lectures from here on out through the end of the year. And we're finding that people love virtual learning. They love to sit at home and learn and they're really getting it at home. The, the hard part is the hands-on because we want people to do hands-on. So we have our E3, which is our, our one, two, three. It's our third course is coming up in just a couple of weeks. And we have a whole day of students who want to come in and place implants on patients in office. And then we do the teaching. So we we have a few patients who are a few students who do not want to come face to face because of COVID. So they're just watching from home. And then the ones who want to come in, we're bringing them in the office. We're following guidelines and, you know, we're social distancing everybody and it'll be fine. Um, our full mouth at the end of the year is going to be virtual and also in person. The in person to me is always so much better because you do get the hands on, but virtual learning is fine if that's, if that's your, your thing. We also have a business of dentistry course in November that um, again will be virtual. So if you want to learn it virtual versus being in person, whatever works for you. You know, I like what you said about this whole full mouth that uh, I want to reiterate is one of the most stressful things is if you're, and I've said this before, is if you're not planning your case properly, you know, if you want to just take out teeth and put in a denture and then come back in and you have to uncover those implants and then, and then convert the denture over, that's a stressful appointment. You know, and then and then, then, then you got to work out the aesthetics and then, uh, you know, hopefully you got the aesthetics right. Then you're going to have to take out the upper and lower converted dentures that probably look like crap and then take a final impression and then and then somehow mount that case in your lab. If you're even mounting your own cases and then try to get the aesthetics of that to, to the lab. I mean, that's just like a super stressful appointment. It's a nightmare. It's a time wasting for you disaster for, for you. Yeah. And for the patient, you know, it's like, so to the idea to have two provisionals chair side, brilliant. I mean, great idea, especially if the aesthetics are on point. Let's say the aesthetics patients, not happy with the initial sure. aesthetics. Um, and you're start, you're trying to stay, you know, as digital as possible. Um, and you need a, or, or, or even another scenario would be, let's say one of the implants failed, right? And it was, uh, let's say a 19 site and, and, and you don't, you need a really another implant back there. Obviously Rob's going to, you know, take out the provisionals, put another implant in and bury it. Then eventually come back in and, 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 you know, and then we'll go back to the start restoring again. But on your end, how do you pick that up on your end? And, and what's your workflow for something like that to keep it as easy as possible and seamless because that's what you want to do, right? Yep, absolutely. So let's start with if an implant fails. So we've all heard all on four, none on three, right? So, so again, okay, so I'm glad you said that. So are you guys big proponents of all on four? Um, so as I said, Dr. Rob has a PhD in engineering. He will over-engineer a case always. That does not mean that you're walking out with 20 implants in your mouth. It means that he's looking at the forces of the bite and who the patient is as to how many implants go in their mouth. And we also have to look at things like, are they a smoker? Uh, are they a grinder? You know, do they have parafunctional habits? That determines how many implants someone gets. You can't oh. say across the board, everybody gets four implants or five implants. Right. So and Aaron Elliott was on this podcast a while back and she was she's you know she's in the implant dentistry she's placing by horizons she's been in sleep dentistry for a long period of time she screens for people patients that have sleep apnea and your workup you know if somebody has sleep apnea that is going to play into the biomechanics of your implants the way you design your prosthetics the way you you fill out the buccal corridors what? the anterior ap spread that you know their, their pva angles and all that kind of stuff so how does that you know what is it what is it are you looking for intermolar dimension? Are you looking for those those telltale signs of this is where I'm going to lay out the teeth, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you always have to screen for TMD. You always have to screen for sleep apnea because those those both of those can uh, factor into the success of the prosthesis. So you're absolutely right. You screen those and then you determine what your AP spread is going to be, where your implants are going to be placed, where your primary implants are going to be placed and secondary implants for load. Um, you know, cantilevers, we're, we, we hate cantilevers. We just, we're not a big opponent, component, uh, opponent of cantilevers. Part of that's because Dr. Rob is an engineer and he understands how cantilevers work and the forces that they put on the substructures. So, you know, you have to take all that into consideration. And if for some reason you do everything just right and then you get a failure, and, and we know that that can happen, then you have to start thinking about, okay, how, how can I 
I, I have this prosthesis that's a PMMA. How can I salvage what I salvage what I have by p p replacing the implant? So Dr. Rob has um, perfected a technique where he can pick up his guide, and um, if an implant fails, he can literally place his guide back on the other implants and use the original guide to go back into the original uh, place to place the implant after healing so that he can still use the same PMMA and move forward with the same prosthesis. Because that's one of the things we hear from people with full mouth. They're like, what if I get to the zirconia and then somewhere down the road, something fails? And we say, fine, unscrew the zirconia, take out the failure, you know, uh, temporize the patient. Uh, we'll, we'll put their PMMA back in place. Sometimes we'll put their, their zirconia back in place. We'll allow the site to heal, whether we have to do some grafting or not. And then we'll come back with the original guide and use the original guide to replace that implant. And that's part of what he teaches in his full mouth course. Wow, that's definitely a workflow. So you guys are literally not taking any impressions or digital impressions. Uh, if we if we do anything, we do a scan. The only thing we do with polyvinyl is if we have to do a wash under a PMMA to send it to the lab. That's incredible. Wow. Because one of the, I mean, again, going back to what I said, one of the hardest things is taking a full arch, final impression, a multi-unit abutments, because you have to splint all those uh, fixture mounts together, you know, use a tray that you drilled out or use a mirror tray. I mean, what, it, that, that's, it's a long, intensive procedure and yeah. you guys have and not ri really simplified it not only that bit. danny but let's face it it's 2020 i mean we did that stuff years ago it's time to move past that you don't need to be cutting your patient more than once there is no reason once you get past that surgery day everything else should be above the tissue you should never have to go in there again unless you get a failure and our, you know failures are few and far between if you do it right and you plan it correctly so look, good good question for you. Let's say the patient has a high smile line, right? Female, broad, tall, high smile line, and to tuck that transition zone above that her lip, impossible. And it, the only way to do that is you would have to obliterate so much bone, and then you don't have any more bone left. You're gonna have to go to FP one. We have never had a we have never had a case like that ever where somebody's we've had lots of high smile lines lots of high, high smile lines we've never had a case where we've had to tuck it up so far now have we had to do sinus lifts occasionally occasionally we've had to do a sinus lift but we've never had it up so high that we didn't have enough bone now remember the protocol that we do we level the bone we are removing bone we have a bone guide that tells us exactly how much bone to reduce. And so it literally is like connecting the dots. And then we stack the guide for the implants on top of that. And so the implants are guided too. This is a no pucker technique. I mean, you walk in the room, everything is like laid out for you. It's, it's connect the dots, color between the lines and go home. It's so easy. I mean, I guess if you're doing a little, uh, that many cases, it's a no pucker technique, but for the guy that does one a month, <laughs> there might be a pucker factor. <laughs> you know what, Danny? I would take that challenge from you. I bet you, you do this technique and you're going to be like, oh my God, it's so easy. I mean, literally, if you have a guide and you can't go any, any deeper than the guide tells you, and you can't go, you know, buccal lingual, you can't go mesial distal. It, it, I mean, it, it limits you. So there's no way that you can make a mistake because you're limited. It may take you a little bit longer than three hours to do a full mouth for your first case, but I, I guarantee you four to five at the most, you know, two arches. It's really a simple, simple technique. Come to our full mouth class. It's in November, the first weekend in November in Raleigh. You'll love it. First week in November. Okay. Uh, uh, I might hit you. I might um, take you up on that offer. It's in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yep. And again, if you don't want to do it uh, in person because of COVID, it will be virtual. But oh, wow. The whole course is going to be virtual. Correct. Correct. Yep. Give me those dates again. <laughs> the first weekend in November. First week in November. All right. So and you can go to our website, which is www.stanleyinstitute.com. And you can see all of our courses. Wow. So, um, man, and that, that building's enormous. That's where you guys teach the facility? 
Uh, if you're looking at the building, it's probably our dental building. Is that the one that's yeah. family dentistry on the front? Yeah, so we, we actually have the whole second floor of that building. So when the elevator opens, it opens into our lobby. And so the whole oh, second goodness. floor is our, is our dental office. The call center is actually on the first floor. So the call center is one floor down. So you, okay, so implant placement, fully guided, full art surgery. You guys are using the keys from Bi Horizons. Is that right? Correct. They have a key system? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is Bi Horizons, I mean, uh, you may or may not know, but um, you know, now that the, the keys are in the drills on some of the some systems. Correct. Has you think? I mean, have you talked to the sales rep? I'm sure you guys are um, pretty good friends. If you're if you're placing that many implants, so are they headed to move to more a keyless system? So my husband is a key opinion leader for Bi Horizons, and and we do go down to Alabama quite often to visit their facility. And again, because my husband has a PhD in engineering, he is able to give them a lot of feedback on their systems. And that is one of the things that, that he's talked with them about. I don't know where they stand. I, I do know it's been mentioned. Um, but he's always given them feedback on how they can improve on their system because he uses them a lot and he's an engineer. So he, he thinks from a dentist point of mind and from an engineering point of view. And so it works really well for an engineering company like BioHorizons. Exactly, because that's kind of how they started out uh, by an engineer. So I'm going to, you obviously know a lot, so I'm going to hit you with a hard question. Okay, you ready for it? I'm ready. Okay, so you have a patient, full arch rehab, everything goes perfect. Implants integrate, you're happy, the tissue looks great, multi abutments are beautiful, uh, the, the aesthetics are right, everything's, you're loving life, you're ready to go to finals, but you notice the mucogingival line is around your implant. You don't have enough keratinized tissue around the multi abutment. It's been six months, the patient's healed. Do you, what do you do? Well, first of all, that would never happen because we plan for that too. But let's just say that happened. Uh, we always want to have enough keratinized tissue around our, our implants because if you don't, it's always going to be an area of irritation. So we'll always graft that. We'll come back and graft it. So it's a pedicle graft, free gingival graft. Um, it, so it's probably, I, I honestly, I don't know because it depends on the situation and Dr. Rob does all of those. So Rob we, does those, okay. yeah, but we look at those from case to case and decide which way we want to do that. I mean, he does alloderm obviously, but he also does, uh, he, he does the pellicle graph. He does free gingival graphs. I mean, he does it all connected tissue. Does he, what do you do an alloderm graph for one of those as well? So I don't know that. Uh, possibly, you know, that's a question for him. I, I don't that's a harder. Yeah, I, w I would love to poke his brain on that. Okay, so what? What? what let's say. Okay, w w could you answer this question? What are the techniques that he uses to get thicker tissue around an implant in a thin biotype patient? Don't hate me. I'm going to hit you hard though. <laughs> well, I can tell you one of the things that he teaches in his uh, implant class is something called gum drop. And so basically, sometimes you just don't have enough keratinized tissue on the buccal surface, especially with a lot of single implants in the posterior area. So what he'll do is he'll cheat and place the incision line a little bit more uh, lingually or pal 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 palatally, and he'll tease that tissue over to the buccal. And then now you have the keratinized tissue that was across the ridge and a little bit on the lingual surface pushed over to the buccal, and that will heal and that tissue will become a lot fuller and a lot more keratinized. So that's a technique that he uses quite often. Okay, what about, uh, 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 let's see, and you've answered everything perfect. Let's see, PRF, big proponents, yeah. sticky oh, bone. Yes. Use it almost every single surgery. He'll, he'll draw some blood, spin it down almost every single surgery. And the PRF goes around the implants, around the graft sites. How, how does uh, it do that? He normally just tucks it underneath the, the tissue itself. So if he's laid up flat, like for instance, in full mouth, uh, if he lays a flap, he'll he'll tuck it underneath the tissue before he sutures up the tissue. That's unbelievable. Guy sounds incredible. Uh, man, I'd, I'd love to see what you guys have going on at the Institute. Obviously, you, you've uh, taken a lot of courses, I can tell, by the way you talk, and you have a passion for it, especially if you're teaching it. I mean, that's uh, kudos to you for putting so much energy in, into your practice. Thank and you. With four docs. Thank you. Two hygienists and all the, all the other staff and call center. My gosh. You guys have really, really taken it up at the next level. Thank you. Well, we'd love uh, to have you at the Institute. Come join us. I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna take you up on that. I'd, I'd love to tune in in November and see what you guys got going on. Okay, good. Um, I really appreciate this podcast. And, and look, I might have to get Rob um, 
is his name Rob, right? Right. Yeah. I might have to get him on a podcast in the future. I think kind of visit with him about the surgical aspect as well. I mean, I, I can really appreciate how you're restoring these cases, um, you know, on multi unit abutments and full arch zirconia. And, you know, if you're whacking down bone, you're having FP3s, you have plenty of zirconia with to stand the forces, and you're not worried about fracture. Correct. Um, so incredible. So, last question before I let you go. Um, are you going zirconia direct to multi unit abutment, or do you have a titanium abutment interface? We have, uh, so we have a titanium substructure with zirconia on it. Is that what you're asking me? Yes. 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 That's what we did. Looted, looted to the zirconia, correct. correct? Correct. Yeah. Now, what lab are you using for all those? Um, Can you say that? So, um, Sculpture Studio Lab, which is Lee Culp's lab, uh, is literally upstairs in our building so lee culp is the godfather correct the guy is incredible yes so we use him for all of our zirconias and and it we're just lucky enough that he's in our building and you know that's kind of you know the grace of god <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> wow i would love to see some of your work and your workflows and all that kind of stuff what a cool podcast this is great thank you so much for being on this um and so, okay, what I'm going to do in the show notes is put all your information, contact information. Please do. Um, your website, the Stanley Institute .com, uh, You know, your, your practice website, which is uh, StanleySmiles.com. Um, you get, you're incredible. Thank you. Love thank what you're doing. Love to hear from you. Thanks for being on this podcast. I really appreciate you, your time today. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.